Good afternoon, Mr. President. I come to you today representing the families of the victims of September 11th, as well as millions of my fellow Americans. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to read my letter to you, 20 minutes with the President. And if not, at least had its contents brought to your attention. We have questions, Mr. President. Lots of questions. A lot of them are detailed in my letter. But trust me, there are hundreds of more questions. As my letter chronicles, sir, the 9-11 Commission itself says they were lied to, deceived, and essentially prevented from carrying out a real investigation. The people of the United States and the world demand the truth, sir. We have to continuously ask questions. That's what a patriot does. That's what a true American does. We ask questions. You, sir, have the power as well as the responsibility to initiate a truly independent congressional investigation into the events of 9-11 as well as its aftermath. We want our country back, Mr. President. Therefore, I'm not just calling on you and your team. I'm calling on each and every American citizen to wake up, stand up, and demand the truth. We're counting on you, Mr. President. Be on the right side of history. An investigation must not interfere with the ongoing efforts to prevent the next attack. Senator Tom Daschle said last week that you called him several times and urged him not to investigate the events of September 11th. Tom's wrong. He has, uh, I think, in this case, uh, you know, let's say a misinterpretation. So now you see what a true, brave American will do. When will you start becoming a man? and standing up, and not listening to these lies, these constant, constant barrage of lies, where the people, like Glenn Beck, like Bill O'Reilly, okay, just sit there and lie to you constantly, lied you into wars with nations that didn't attack us. Were you attacked by Iraq? Now that there's a million dead Iraq people, when are the Holocaust survivors going to stand up and say, hey, after we've killed a million people that didn't attack us, I think that's enough. So, that's my thought. So anyway, you got to see a little bit of... Um, moment of truth there. You got to see a little bit on what happened in Washington that wasn't brought to you. And you know what? I actually talked to Sharonites who were in Washington at the time and they said it was real. Truly amazing, huh? So, there for you this week. May you behold the real story. Nazi forces seek to establish systems of government based on the regimentation of all human beings by a handful of individual rulers who seize power by force. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. A new world order is coming into being, but it looks less and less like the world order that Mr. Kissinger had constructed in his own mind. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. What is the Bohemian Grove? Well, it's a kind of summer camp for the powerful. Among its members, political figures like Gerald Ford, President Reagan, Vice President Bush, Richard Nixon is a Bohemian. Each year, guests like Henry Kissinger or Zbigniew Brzezinski address members on their areas of expertise. You'd be a poster child for these people because you have served on the board of the Council on Foreign Relations. You started, helped start the Trilateral Commission, and you've been to the Bilderberger Groups. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. I don't believe in this notion of some sort of secret societies controlling people. But, of course, in any political system, there are sort of over-the-table and under-the-table arrangements. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine by the military-industrial complex. 
Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. We can find meaning and reward by serving some higher purpose than ourselves. A shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. The quest for the new world order is in part a challenge to keep the dangers of disorder at bay. We were interested today to hear that more than a hundred law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. What do you think the most important thing is for Barack Obama? I think his task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. I think the new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new, and it is not order. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Also in Massachusetts, the legislature is acting rapidly on a bill updating what the state can do at a public health emergency. That bill has languished on Beacon Hill for some time, but with the flu outbreak, it's now racing through the legislature. NECN's Josh Brugadier is at the State House in Boston tonight. Josh? R.D., the state Senate passed this bill, Bill 2028, today. They did so unanimously, and it gives the governor and the health commissioner the power to act in the public's interest in case in any kind of medical emergency. Timing sped up a hearing and ultimately unanimous Senate approval of the Pandemic and Disaster Preparation and Response Bill in Massachusetts. The bill gives the public health commissioner the discretion to respond to an outbreak like the kind going on in Mexico, to close or evacuate buildings, enter private property, isolate or quarantine people, and to get and distribute meds and vaccines. A registry of Massachusetts volunteers would be created and would be activated in case of emergency. Plus, the commissioner could request personnel from other states. The bill also protects health care workers from liability. Concerns about the spread of swine flu meant lawmakers, such as Worcester County Democrat Richard Moore, didn't want to take any chances. It's too bad that we have to have something like that pending to get us to finally act. But uh, we were, this was actually on, on the calendar before that became a news story, so it's, uh, it's not that it's totally that, but it does give us another, another reason why it's a good idea to have this on the books. NRD, the bill has actually passed the Senate a couple times the past few years, but has never passed both the Senate and the House. The House is expected to take up the bill sometime this week. Josh, any penalty if you don't follow the emergency declaration rules? It can actually get to be a pretty severe penalty because for each day someone didn't follow a rule, for example, if somebody was asked to be quarantined and they decided not to follow that, it could be a fine of up to $1,000 per day they didn't follow and also up to 30 days in prison. Josh Brugadier on Beacon Hill. Tonight. It is not the elite cockroaches that determine that. It is you.